There is this phrase, um, don't think you built a better mousetrap because everybody thinks they built a better mousetrap or a superlative product. Don't fool yourself. And hence, you're going to need a lot of marketing, a lot of um, even window dressing at times because your product is no different in essence from anyone else's. It might be said thus, there are only very few better mousetraps. Some might say certain religions that came about and have been around a long time. Or some might say in the modern age, oh, the iPhone, or oh, the iPad, or oh, the invention of the automobile, oh, the invention of television or radio or the printing press, and that other than this, there are very few better mouse traps, and hence the applicable term next being said, uh, don't fool yourself and build it and think they will come. That's only in the movies, they say. And yet, aren't there a very few people who were discovered at age 20, say, after a screen test for Hollywood and became instant stars? For instance, Audrey Hepburn in her first movie, then a hit, Roman Holiday. Well, how many people know that what went into Audrey Hepburn being discovered at age 20 was much heartache, much trauma in World War II, when, for instance, she worked part-time in the underground against the uh, German Empire, shall we say. I believe she was in the Netherlands. And so she didn't just come out of thin air, as per the better mousetrap, arguably, that she was. And that, too, with certain other people, only we don't always know the details involved. Some, too, in families, have been roundly criticized as being possible frauds for coming seemingly out of nowhere, or how we might say, oh, they were such long shots. How can this be? And yet there are videos and common sense knowledge that maybe these people inevitably, in fact, were working for decades or years and years on various issues, philosophies, flaws of theirs, unbeknownst to anyone else, perhaps, including family members. Sometimes even a family member will die. All of a sudden, everybody discovers they left behind millions and millions of dollars that nobody knew had been generated by that person. But in general, we say, well, better mousetraps are rare, and thus don't fool yourself about the probability of your having coming up with that. And secondly, don't think then that if you build it and you think it's a better mousetrap that they will come, they won't come because it's not a better mousetrap. You're going to have to use a lot of marketing. You have just invented the 1,500th flavor of ice cream. Don't think it's a better form of ice cream flavor than anyone else's. Don't fool yourself is the mantra. So what would be, to recap, one way, I believe, a better mousetrap could be had that doesn't yet really exist. Either you come up with a better religion by far, or perhaps you invent a whole new vocabulary set. You rewrite the dictionary completely so that we have a total mind frame shift of a whole variety of things, especially concerning respect toward ourselves and our fellow man. That, to me, is the mousetrap that has not yet been either invented or, if invented by anyone, it hasn't been published and disseminated. Now, I now know there is, for instance, a Native American Indian. Uh, I think his name was Sequoia. There's a museum after him that I attended, went to a year ago in uh, the Venure, Tennessee area. And... Uh, he invented the Cherokee Indian Nation uh, written language. To me, that is a form of a better mousetrap, upon which very shortly it was adopted widespread 
and uh, the Bible was translated into Cherokee. Uh, it had many advantages, thus the written word, some say. But I believe an even better mousetrap would be not just to invent uh, something to write our ideas down with, but to totally reframe how we view ourselves and others in a far more respectful way. This yet has not been published to my knowledge. Uh, maybe, in fact, the better mousetrap in terms of uh, a published dictionary that is quite reformed is to throw out all dictionaries, throw out all words, and go back to preliterate cultures. Uh, now, some would say, well, that's totally ludicrous. Yet, if words get us into so many misconceptions, we either need to throw out all the words or reinvent a number of them, I believe, particularly and solely when it comes to people. That, to me, is the mousetrap yet that has not been invented. There are semi-mousetraps that are better. That uh, You could call it the iPhone, the iPad, a written word language when there wasn't one before, the airplane, theoretically, labor-saving devices, uh, penicillin, and so on. But the mousetrap that has not yet been invented that would be profound, the better mousetrap that would be built and they would come uh, would be a new vocabulary set in print that would totally reframe our respect level of others, our understanding of them, when we have so many words to the opposite that give so many misconstrued ideas about others, how they came to be, how they can change, and um, ultimately uh, what we expect of them. We need to totally shift our vocabulary and have it in print as a new dictionary that would be called the best mousetrap perhaps ever yet conceived, ever yet invented. I think it might have been Alan Watts, then a philosopher from England transplanted to America, who said our words are clumsy. And other philosophers saying at times that our words can be used to uh, manipulate us, and yet others saying our words can cause others much pain at the same time that certain truths are conceived or conveyed, rather. That, to me, would be the worthiest, the best, the greatest mousetrap ever invented. It might even go beyond, some say, the best religions ever to come along. For isn't religion supposed to be in the service of mankind, his happiness, how he aids each other? And uh, what good is any form of religion if a vocabulary set isn't there alongside to show people ultimate understanding through the use of those terms, those words. That's why I believe Dr. David D. Burns, in his book Feeling Good uh, for Mood Therapy, you might say, but moreover, he would say in the book Happiness in General, uh, he would say, don't label people. And the Christian scriptures say, don't judge people, lest you be judged. Well, labels, judging, pigeonholing, all of that implies now in my mind very strongly the use of words that are inept to categorize, to describe. We need new words that do not do that, thus are not what we call labeling people, judging people, but rather correctly, in every essence, understanding, assessing them. We don't need blame words. We don't need words which stir up hate. Words which give us misconceptions about who people are, how they got that way, who they could become, and how. When this happens, probably by one person or a very few, and it's in print as the new dictionary, I think it will take the world by storm and be the greatest mousetrap ever invented, giving true meaning to, if you build it, the better and best mousetrap of all that is, they will come. And they'll come in droves.